This is part two of our video series on two-story house framing, gable roof with garage. Here's the gable roof here, and here's the garage. Let's go ahead and take a quick tour here. This is the corner here, living room, or the uh, den here, bedroom. Around to the other corner. This would be one of the windows in the great room or family room door opening for the sliding glass door into the great room kitchen window bathroom window master bath window bath window here and then bedroom window here and down here we have the half bath window with the garage connecting to the building Let's go ahead and take apart the garage, take a look at how it was built. There's the roof without the sheathing. Zoom in here. Here we have rafter ties that are four foot on center. Every other bay, the rafters are two foot on center. And I'm not going to bother pointing out any lumber dimensions because they might not work for your particular building anyway. So fascia board the garage header. Over here you can take a look at that the fascia board and the um, roof extends a little bit past. This is a common way to build something like this. You can just go ahead and run it straight across here but I think they don't do it because of uh, roof leaks. If they just run it straight this water could run off the edge but uh, again this uh, seems to be more common practice, and that's what I'm trying to draw in here, stuff that I've built plenty of times before. Rafter in the ridge, rafter attaching to the walls. Sometimes you can run the ridge pa past a little bit, which is what I would have done, you know, if I was building something like this. Wait a minute, I did draw this. Okay, I better point that out then. So you can run the ridge past a little bit and then put a 2 by 4 underneath it as a support and that would that would work fine but do you need it not really it's uh, everything here is working out fine but then I would throw that in there why is the fascia board away from the wall it's usually an inch that's standard for construction so that you can run the stucco or the siding behind it and not uh, now if it's siding you might not need to do this but for stucco I usually do it to um, give the, you don't want the wood to be buried in the stucco. We don't want wood touching cement uh, if we can help it. Keep that in mind. Other corner, here we have our lookouts, our two by fours that are supporting the fascia here and the roof overhang. Blocks, again, the rafter ties Zoom out, there's a picture of that. Let's get rid of the fascia board and get rid of the roof. Well, here we have our wall framing with our anchor bolts. Make sure that you have your anchor bolts in there. Here's our home without the garage. I'm going to go through this one a little faster. We went, uh, had the details in on the other, when I went over the garage roof, it's kind of the same construction. Except here we have two, two foot on center rafters with 16 inch on center ceiling joists, which means every fourth board should connect. So here we have this one here. And if we go two foot, four foot, here we have another connection. Ridge. Other side. And again, I'm going to go through this a little faster. We have already covered some of this stuff in the last uh, section. Ridge again, fascia board, roof, fascia boards removed, and wanted to point out that you can use a smaller board here. Let's say you have 2x6 or 2x8 ceiling joists. You can just simply nail a 2x4 up against the um, cripples or the gable studs and uh, you don't need to use a full-size board here if you're looking to save a few dollars on your building cost. Back to our roof. Uh oh, roof's gone. 
Take a look at our ceiling joist. Here they are. You might have to notch the ends of these so that they don't protrude past the edge of the roof or past the roof rafters. Here's our two by four I was talking about. Backing, you can use a two by six on a two by four wall or a two by eight on a two by six wall. And that will give you an inch on each side, but make sure that it's centered. If you, this thing's moved over just a little bit and you have an inch and a half on this side, it means you're only gonna have a half inch here and that's not gonna make the drywaller happy. So there's the backing right there for the drywall. So this is drywall backing. Another area here, here we have a joist that's um, close enough to use for drywall backing. All you would need to do is nail something else like a two by four here. And here we have the same situation. Two by six backing again, and then our two by four for the attached to the gable studs. Now I have a block in here. That's because the roof rafters line up. Again, you can uh, go back and look at this, run through and watch the video, and then go back and check everything out. Without this block, the rafters wouldn't, uh, if I just lap the rafters, then it wouldn't work out with the roof rafters being um, lining up. So this is a kind of a helpful tip here. And you don't see this a lot. You see some just come in, they, they'll move the roof, they'll take the ceiling joists and they might angle them a little bit. Um, a variety of different things I've seen, but sometimes a block like this will work out just fine and make everything line up. So, and here we have some blocks over the wall. Not a bad idea to move the, ball, the blocks off to the side, line them up with one side of the wall or the other, just in case an electrician or the plumber needs to get through here. Always helpful if you center them. The blocks will probably be removed by the plumber. Um, another showing you another section here where the backing and the blocks are not. Uh, you can could you block right across here? Yeah, if the ceiling joist went across here, it wouldn't be a problem. More on the blocking. Here's some backing over the closet. This is one of the bedrooms. Here's the other bedroom. And here's the closet, top of the closet with the backing. Zoom in there. Take a look at the bottom. Not a bad idea. If you do put backing, make sure that you extend it past a little bit. Um, not a, I've seen people with a situation like this, they might just run a block across here and not even put any backing in here because that would be enough for them to hold the drywall up. And keep in mind when you're drywalling, the board that goes on the wall shoves up tight against the, against the drywall that's on the ceiling and that helps support it also. Another view of it, here's the bedroom and there is the last view on the ceiling joist. Let's go ahead and take a look at the wall framing. Corners, make sure that the top board, top plate, top top plate, laps over the lower plate that runs in the opposite direction to give you a nice connection here. Bottom plates can just butt up against each other with no problem. Bottom plate can just butt up against the other one. Top plates need to, need to lap. And you can see it here too. We'll see more of that later. Here's the master bedroom closet, master bedroom bathroom. Another view. The bedroom with the closet header. It's a nice view of it here. Bedroom one, basically bedroom two, closet, closet, linen cabinet, linen closet area, bathroom, uh, master bath, master closet, master bedroom, and then kind of a whatever area here. And then here's the hallway. Header, give you an idea of how this is framed here in this section. This section here. Bathroom, the linen closet, they always run the plates through and that's a good idea. Same thing at the bottom. 
Um, I don't know if you can see it here, this little area, run the plates through. A lot of times the cabinets, they put a face frame on the cabinets and they need the bottom plates and the top plates. So not a bad idea to run those through. Uh, the bathroom, the door is going to open up this way. Two studs is usually enough um, distance. This would give you one trimmer and one king stud, and that gives you a nice distance for the door to open up. Uh, on the other side, it can be um, whatever, however long, long the wall is, as we can see here in the bedroom. Let's see if I go over there. You can see here in the for the closet, we have two studs. The door will open this way up against the wall. And that is it for this video. It will be uh, make sure that you watch video number three and uh, that will talk about the lower section, floor joist and floor framing and the lower wall framing.